a review of the Salem's cart with someone's dog. Uh, <laughs> Welcome back to the channel. We are finally making an official review for the Salem's cart. Uh, we've been using this for the last couple months on productions and we put it through its paces and we're here to tell you about it. So a few things about this cart uh, before we get into the details of showing you how we set it up, tear it down. I want to say Salins has great customer service. Um, I can't say the same for quality control, but the customer service is great. Um, they've taken very good care of us. They've been very responsive on communication uh, and it's been great uh, being one of the first uh, people using their carts on productions and being able to test it, give them feedback. Um, that doesn't mean that our cart gets fixed for free uh, when we do encounter issues, but it does mean that we're able to communicate with them and stay in touch. And they've been very quick to communicate back with us and proactive to say, hey, what problems are you having? What feedback do you have for us? And that's been fantastic. So while we were at NAB checking out all the carts, we talked to Innovative, we talked to Salins, we talked to uh, DP had a great cart there. Um, Pro-Aim did not have uh, a booth or carts there, so we didn't get a chance to talk to them or see their carts in person, uh, but we've seen a lot online. We have a lot of other Pro-Aim gear, um, so we do like Pro-Aim. So as we were looking at the different carts, um, we were look, going back and forth to booths. We looked at the Innovative carts, we looked at the Salins carts, and one thing we noticed was that they looked very similar. They definitely did take a lot. Uh, a lot from the innovative cart you know be that what it is they are selling a very similar cart at a very lower price i'd like to also note it is 10 a.m it's 96 degrees out here welcome to bakersfield everybody it's going to be 112 today and today is the fourth of july literally our day off is the only time we've been able to find to film this video because we have been so dang busy, which we praise the Lord for. Yeah, good problems, good problems to have. We're gonna show you what it's like to use it and do kind of a detailed walkthrough of building it. So with this uh, cart, uh, everything fits inside. That's how we have it right now. Um, so they got these locks on the side that you unlatch on both sides and that's how we take the lid off. Very, very similar to uh, another manufacturer. So then the lid just pops off. And by the way, it's, it's not heavy. You can do this with one hand. Not, it's, it's not heavy. It's not light, but right. it's, not, it's not overly heavy. So inside you'll see that we've got what we call the mouse pad foam. There's two layers um, of that. One for the top, one for the bottom. So it pops in here. And a quick note, this yeah. mouse pad foam usually comes with the cart. This is like legit mouse pad. Um, material and we were looking on the internet because because we picked those up at at the trade show yeah. um so it didn't have one and we got in contact with salins and they sent us out one so that that really worked out but uh <laughs> we need to like glue it or something to yeah. this so we don't have to be dealing with this all the time and, um, and, and you'll notice this is already picking up little scratches the the finish definitely leaves a little to be wanted um on this i mean you expect it to scratch at some level but Again, we always have this on it, but it's not glued to the bottom, so that just that's just from 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 moving it, wear yeah. and tear, moving it. It doesn't have to be pretty; it has to work. That's right. <laughs> and I think it's pretty. I, well, yeah. I think it's kind of. pretty. I'm not saying it's ugly, you know. <laughs> it's a good design. They thought about it. So inside, we've got wheels, 10-inch um, uh, pneumatic wheels. Uh, some of them swivel, some of them don't. They all use this kind of uh, what is that dovetail uh, connection. Uh, this, I mean, this tire still got the, uh, the we call those the pokies. I, I always call <laughs> the them the, the tire hairs. The tire hairs. I mean, and we've taken this thing out on like a dozen shoots. Uh, and it was funny because when we got the cart, because we picked up a, a model off the show floor, it was, you know, gently used at some level. Um, Is that a new tire? <clears throat> I'm like, this tire was brand new. Uh, and all the rest of them had the, uh, the hairs nubbed off. So I thought that was kind of entertaining. <laughs> um, anyway, so we got tires. Uh, and then some of them, uh, you have two that swivel. Uh, and and the both swivels are supposed to have a brake uh, like this that stops the tire uh, and locks it in. But the brake that came on this one uh, was too long. It was defective and it was always rubbing and stopping the tire. So I just pulled it off. Um, so quality control, you know, there, there are things. Keep that in mind. Um, Keep that in mind as we can as we go forward. Right. <laughs> uh, so these are the poles that go in, and they drop in and lock. And then these um, are the coolest thing uh, on this cart. These are the mass risers. Um, I'll show you. These go in the top, 
and it actually drops down inside the leg pole and then you can extend it up, so super cool. We'll go ahead and put the wheels on the bottom first. And if you're one man banding this and uh, you know, you're getting your gear out of your, your truck or your car or whatever and some guy comes to rob you, these are also great weapons. <laughs> <laughs> All together, fully loaded wheels and everything, this cart's about 120 pounds. So the wheels have dovetails that slide on. Uh, I am gonna point out uh, on my close-up camera that um, these are starting to deform a little bit um, after about a dozen shoots. And you can see it here on this side also. Um, there's just that, this gap coming in. It's just gonna kinda slowly keep deforming over time. It, it, right now it's minor. And the entire bottom uh, design of this cart, they said they've been working on strengthening. We also have these skateboard wheels for rolling, which are moderately helpful. Uh, uh, correction, sir, that are ro those are rollerblade wheels. Rollerblade wheels. That's right, you weren't a rollerblader, you were. No, I, I was a skater punk. Yeah, I was a rollerblader. So we'll typically put uh, the rotating wheels on one side and the not rotating wheels on the other side, and it doesn't really matter. Slide down uh, on here, and then you lock this in. You got the turning wheels on that side? <clears throat> so I got turning wheels on this side, and then... So there is a stopper right here. Yeah, little safety button right here. So none of that is um, really oh. bad. And this is the loose wheel. Is the sound of those loose screws, um, which at this point we're just finger tightening because we have to take this whole wheel assembly off in order to get to those to tighten them. Uh, which at some point I am going to go through this whole cart and Loctite everything. I just haven't had any time. Since we got this cart, we have been slammed busy. Which is uh, a good thing. Which is great. That's why it's taken us since, what, mid-April uh, to make this video. So. Yeah. <laughs> well, and the good part about it is that we've been really busy, so we've really been putting it through its paces. Like, really. Yeah. Um, so, and I feel good about that. I feel good that, that you're doing all the work. <laughs> just kidding. And I feel, I feel good that we really put it I mean, for you guys who have been watching my vlogs, you've seen almost, almost on every vlog, we're using this cart and we're waiting it down like crazy. Here, why don't you let me do one, Josh? You can do one if you want. <laughs> <laughs> you were talking. And, and, and so we've been using this thing like crazy. And uh, what I can say is no major fails for us because uh, we would have definitely addressed it. I would have put, definitely put it in my vlogs. Um, so we've not had a major fail yet. Um, we had a flat tire, but that's not a major fail. That's kind of like what you have in your car. You can get right. a flat tire. Uh, we got a goat head. Got these at, uh, got these at NAB. I mean, like for swag, that ain't bad. There was a, I remember there was another one as we're working. I remember there was another booth giving away, like everybody's giving away like their lanyards and junk, which is, you know, it's, it's all good. It's free. But there was a company actually, as we, it was like the last day of, or second to the last day of NAB. And they were giving away gaff tape. We were like, what? Everybody ran to that booth. It was, uh, what were they? I, I, they were like lighting solutions or something like that. Yeah, they, they, they sold gaff tape. And they were giving away small rolls of gaff tape if you signed up. <laughs> so I'm like, yeah, you're gonna get a lot of sign ups from guys like us. Am I missing something? Well, it's probably. Because it's not open. Yeah. Just in passing, as we're putting this thing together. So you just put these posts in and then you lock them with the latch. Simple as that. Couldn't be any easier. So you can see here how there's one uh, row of screws holding this plate on. And if you look in here, you can actually see um, the deformation kind of, I think it shows better in the light on this side, but you can see a little bit of where that is is poking up and kind of starting to deform. It's, it's subtle, but you can see that um, that little bit of deformation is happening uh, and it's coming through to the bottom. So that is something they said they've added the steel plate here to increase the rigidity uh, and they added two rows of screws. So look how nicely this is cut, right? This mouse bed fits just perfectly inside here uh, goes around all the little edges and stuff like it is a perfect fit they, they it's cut specifically for the cart um, and like like even the fact that they round this corner instead of coming around this whole thing it's like no nope, it goes in there goes under goes fits in that little piece so 
you can't just buy a mouse pad that does what this does. Uh, so it fits very nice. The poles are also marked, which is helpful. Uh, when you go to put everything in and line everything up, you can tell like, hey, we're at the, you know, the bottom of four, the top of four, whatever, like there's, there's marks. Um, because the way we use the cart, we will take these guys and put them across at a certain mark based on what we want to put on the cart. So we like to go to uh, the bottom of four because that's a good size to fit a milk crate underneath that you can still access. Uh, it's maybe a touch overflowing with stuff and then still have lots of room for tripods, light stands and stuff to ride on the top of this. Um, so that's the way we like to, to roll with this. And another thing to point out is these are adjustable uh, levers. So you can turn them however you need to. Yeah, and so we're, we're not gonna be able to get through this, um, this review without mentioning the big dog in the room, which is innovative. Um, and the reason why I'm bringing it up is because this is the exact same um, system that Innovative has um, when, they, when they have their clamping system and um, they did a good job. <laughs> so this is the 40 inch model, which is, I've seen 25 and 26 yeah. different times I've checked. So around 2,500 for this model and the comparative model from Innovative, depending on what features you go with is between four and 5,000. Yeah. So it's half the price um, of the equivalent innovative cart. Are there compromises to get there? I'm sure. Yes, absolutely. There absolutely are. Uh, quality control is one of them. You know, um, they had the whole Justin Porter situation. Uh, so it's like there are, there are quality control issues. We have not had any major problems with ours. Um, other than like we've pointed out, you know, we've got some deformation and different things, uh, going on, but no major issues. Yeah. Go ahead and throw the top on. And we didn't this time, but we do know that if you leave these loose, it's easier to get the top on. Let me actually unlock my locks before I try and do this. Okay, and those lock in. So as we were checking out all the booths at NAB, we were checking out all the carts. Um, there was a lot of, you know, I mean, they're carts, right? There's a lot of similarities. Um, you know, a lot of them have, you know, these nice mounting points um, and different things. Like this one's got, you know, a, a lip that folds down. But one of the things that we noticed was none of the carts had these corner posts except the Salins cart. Um, and we, we went up to the Innovative booth. We checked out what they had. Um, and they're the only other one that has this corner post thing. And again, it's four to five grand for that cart. That's the, um, the Apollo model. Right. The Voyager, which is the lowest one that you'll sometimes catch on sale at B&H. Right. And, and, and you see a lot of people with, you know, the Evo, the Voyager, and that's their, you know, cart that you can get more, more around three grand. Yeah, um, about three and a half. But that cart does not have corner posts. Yeah, it doesn't have any. It's just, it's just a basic cart. Yeah. Uh, which is not bad, but. Uh, and the plus is it's innovative, so you know the, the quality and construction is good. That was definitely one of the things that when we went to the booth, we talked to them and asked them, and I was like, uh, so if this thing breaks down, what can I do? It's like, you can bring it in, we can set you up with a repair shop and we'll get it taken care of. And that's the big difference is, you know, right. you have that assurity. That's why so much of a shop like Costco. It's like, hey, that, we can get that base level Pro-Aim cart for like 1100 uh, bucks, as opposed to 2500 for this. And we're like, if all it is is a cart, why pay more? One of the reasons we pay more is this. Lock that in. Lock. I'm like, how tall is Mike, right? <laughs> I'm 6'2 with my shoes on, which... We have found subsequently they're not the absolute strongest. Right. But, I mean, I mean, look at it, right? It's not, it's not like it's a, uh, a combo stand or something. And this is, this is the thing. You guys have seen on my vlogs. Um, and I've, I've heard so many of you just comment like, dude, that's brilliant. You know, we had a light on this one and we had a diffuser on the other side. Right. And if we wanted a little bit more distance, we could put this one on this side and just get a few more inches of distance. But the point is, is that for those run and gun setups, we were able to do that and it can hold some good weight. We, we ended up with only two and we had shoots and we realized that two was not enough because we didn't want to leave the camera loose up here. And we had, 
you know, silks over here. We had a monitor over here and we realized we need somewhere to put the camera and we were just looking and looking for solutions. And we randomly grabbed a tripod and went, you know what? I wonder. Perfect fit. And it locks in. And lock it and it's locked. It is like just the right size. Um, and this is just a regular Manfrotto tripod. We've tried it with other tripods. I've got a cheap Kayer tripod it works with. So multiple tripods. It has to be one of these centerizes. Um, usually us video guys, we're getting, you know, the, the 75 millimeter fluid head and all right. that good stuff. But any standard centerizer we have tried has worked. So I can't say they will all work, but sure seems like they do. So I'm just gonna leave that right there. Yeah, that was a nice little coincidence. And so we've been putting the camera there. The only downside that we've had is so a, a good tip from one of our buddies, Robert. Yeah. He talked about, look, if you're gonna get a cart, don't get the longest one. And I mean, America, we're like, bigger's <laughs> better. Especially when the price, it was like 2,500 for this size, and it was like 2,700, it was like 200, 200 bucks more. 200 bucks. For an extra like 10 inches. We were like, no brainer, no brainer. 55 inch cart, let's do it. Let's go. And he was like, don't, don't get the long one. And he was like, because if you're in a production and you're in a house and you want to go through a hallway, you are stuck. Boom, boom, you can't get to. And we were like, that's true. And, and my buddy Robert, he's a, he's a DP and a DIT. And so he's always out on sets and he's, and he is an innovator. He is an innovator. Um, and he's always, and he has like the, the, the 40-ish, I think it's 42, I think is the innovative size, but he's got that size. Um, and he's like, there's moments where even that is a little big. And we're like, oh man. So. Thank you, Robert, for that tip. Yeah. And I'm glad we didn't get that 55 because we would have been hosed in many situations just in the last 12-ish shoots we've taken yeah. this thing on. These dimensions, like a household door, this will fit right through with a little bit. And I'll just show you this clip where Josh is actually, we're at one of our shoots and Josh is coming through the door and it's it's right there. You've got like an inch on each side yeah. to get this through a standard door. And so when we, we and, you, and you've seen how we rig up our FX6, it's, it's, it's pretty hefty, it's pretty yeah. beefy. And so there you go. I don't have the uh, the plate on here, but yeah. Uh, but like it, this thing is hanging out. Yeah. And so when you go to go through a doorway, it's not going to work, and we have to pull it off, stick it on the top of the cart just to get through the doorway. So I think we should probably finish putting this cart together, huh? Let's do it. So we got uh, that's my side. Oh, that's right. So these handles just pop on, uh, and again, going through doorways, right? You can put it on the outside, but what that does is make your cart even wider. So flip that thing to the inside that way to get through doors uh, and it just twists on. We really like uh, the features of the cart and what it does. So, so as a solo guy, can you get this in and out of the car? Um, I take the wheels out. Normally you would keep the wheels in this, but I've decided for me, for my puny little muscles, uh, if I take the wheels out, that's enough that I can get this in and out. Basically just kind of let the weight do the job, grab the handle and bring it down. And then you're on your, your uh, rollerblade wheels and so you can roll it around as needed. I found out that this kind of scratches, so I've got a little towel here just to, all you do, kind of tilt it up there, and then it's not bad at all to get in by yourself. And I have some bungee cords, and I just wrap that in, and that's enough to keep it, you know, pretty good. Toss it in there up against it. And between those two things, it stays pretty stable. Let's do some pros and cons uh, of this cart. Pros, it's affordable, it's sturdy, uh, and it ticks all the boxes for features that we want. Um, we wanted pneumatic tires. We wanted something that could actually go over terrain. Um, the cart we had before this was a little husky cart. It had little like little four inch hard wheels. And so everything got vibrated to death uh, on that cart. Go and Home Depot. Right, right, yeah, it's just Home Depot. And it literally said Husky big on the side. I took some gaff <laughs> tape and covered it up because I was just yeah. like, I don't want <laughs> Mike was like, why are you covering that up? I'm like, well, it says Husky, and I don't think our clients want that level of confidence in us. <laughs> um, not that it still wasn't a Husky car, but at least, you know, it didn't say Husky. Uh, anyway, uh, so, and it was small. Like, it's literally half the size of this. Um, if I could have fit everything in my car, I would have brought it for a comparison, but I'm still working out of a CRV where I can't fit everything in the car. Hence, Collapsible is the word I'm looking for, cart. So another big pro is communication with Salins. Uh, they've been fantastic. Um, 
we, after we met him at the show, we continued chatting with them um, through Instagram and email, and they've been very communicative with us, um, checking in to make sure the cart's working, to find out you know what feedback we have for them, because it's a brand new product. Uh, and that was one of the things, when, when we bought the cart, um, and we did get a deal, but we paid for this cart, you know, because we knew we're taking a chance on an untested product from a manufacturer who's never created something like this. Yeah. Um, Salence has been around for a long time and they've created great lighting stuff and photographer gear, yeah. but this is new for them. And, and we knew that, but we also saw that they really took a lot of pages out of the innovative book in the design. And so, and as we looked at the thing, we realized, you know, Overall, they did a good job engineering this product. Um, you know, we talked to Lewis, uh, the designer, and as, as we looked at this stuff and looked at the, the quality, looked at the, the materials, looked at, okay, the, you know, the metal's thick and this and that, whatever, like, yeah, it's hefty, but it's also sturdy. Yeah. And, and, and we just looked at it and went, you know what? This thing is not gonna fall apart on us. Uh, I'm sure there's gonna be issues, but for the price, you can't touch the features. Uh, there's nothing on the market touching the features of this for the price. Yeah. Um, you can pay double the price and get the American made version of this from Innovative, uh, or you can pay half the price and get it from Salence, which is what I chose to do because we do have, you know, we're a small production company still. We have limited resources. We have to decide, okay, do we spend all the money on a cart and not get a big monitor or, or whatever other things we need? Um, or do we say, okay, we'll get a cheaper cart. That way we have more money to get uh, other grip gear that we need. So that's what we decided to do on this. I think one of the things to, that needs to be said as well is, uh, you, you kind of alluded to it, this is kind of a pre-production model. And yes. they wouldn't, they never said anything like that. And um, um, it's not in any kind of paperwork. It's not on the website either. It's also kind of hard to find this on their website. Uh, yeah. But it really is a pre-production because it's like they, 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 uh, they saw the, the competition they created this car and they just kind of brought it out to market, um, like, like an innovative or anything like that. They're gonna right. do. They're gonna make make a run of it. They're gonna test it. They're gonna do some quality control. Then they're gonna bring a refined model to you know some testers on the market to review it and see, get some feedback, beta testing. This one just kind of came out. They just brought it to market pretty quick, and I think. Uh, uh, this is a pre I would call this a pre-production right. model. And, and so we're, we're really beta testing this. Um, and, and we paid to beta test this thing. <laughs> uh, because, we, because we saw the opportunity for us, as well as the opportunity you know, for them to get feedback. And, and we said, you know what, th th this is a good, good fit for us. We've run through a lot of uh, you know, showing off features of this cart. Um, you know, for example, we've got this nice fold down lip here. So you can, do, you can use it as a DIT station. You can work from the front um, and keep it dirty as we're over here in the grass. Uh, so, and we did this for a live stream, um, you know, which I, I've got a vlog on, um, where I sat here and used this more DIT style. I had, a, I had a, you know, a row of monitors and I sat there and did live switching for a production and it was great for that. Hey, and just referencing that, the cool thing that we had for that setup because of these center mass risers, we yeah. had a double header on there and we're able to put one 21 inch monitor and a 15 inch monitor right next to each other, right here on, from this corner. Off it, of the one corner post. It was great. And then over here, I had a wireless receiver for the audio system. And so just on the cart, not a stand on the ground, we had the entire enclosed system with everything we needed. I just had to run power to it. Uh, I mean, we had other, you know, stands and tripods for other things. Yeah, cameras. But, but as far as the actual station, yep. it was self-contained. Um, and, and the year before, we had like a whole table with the whole setup. Cables everywhere, yeah. Just that one production almost made it worth it. I certainly feel like this cart has paid for itself in terms of what we've been able to do, the value we've gotten, the impression we've given on set, the fact that this looks like an innovative cart, um, just... It looks good on set. Clients don't know the difference. It's an actual production card. It really is. Right. And so it levels up what we're doing. It levels up the image of what we're doing so that when we roll on set with this loaded down with gear and we're doing it, you know, all the stuff we do, clients really feel like they're getting their money's worth. Um, so th that is part of it, that show of filmmaking. Uh, so th this definitely ticks that box for us um, because when we roll out with a Husky, it's not impressive. Uh, even if it does get the job done. Yeah. Um, or a Rubbermaid cart, right? Like there, there's multiple ways to get the job done, but this looks good. Um, and that's important. We wanted something that looked good and didn't break the bank. Um, there's lots of other features. It's got lots of mounting points. Um, obviously the wheels, it breaks down. Um, and there's lots of mounting points um, on, these, on these rails here on the side. Uh, so there's lots of ways to attach things. Um, you know, we've got like the RoboCup holders and all kinds of things that we can do. Um, 
And uh, there's, there's some mounting points um, here on these sides too, which we've got, um, as Mike mentioned, uh, some parts coming where we're gonna put a little uh, mast right here, and then we can move this camera situation to the middle so that when we go through doorways, it's not in the way. Um, and then that frees up another corner for other things. And then I'll point out down here, there's so much room. <laughs> Look at this. I mean, we got all these pelicans down here. And of course, my favorite, we got the nice long um, milk crate, yep. which carries just all of our grip equipment. And if we decided to move them, I know um, another vlogger on YouTube actually has all of his stuff that he puts in crates. In, I mean, excuse me, all the stuff that he puts in, uh, in pelicans, he puts them in crates. And so I thought that was actually pretty cool. So and you could load these guys up on the bottom here. And if you wanted to, you could stack them too high. So it's really cool. And you can run stands and all kinds of stuff through here. And, you know, stack this thing up a layer or two full of, of gear in addition to all the stuff down there. So you can really load this thing down. And kind of like we were talking about budget, you know, we, we are budget conscious and budget minded. So we were talking about these center mass stands actually help so that we don't have to buy these if we didn't want to. Uh, and for our first few weeks, that's what we did. And just as you just saw Josh do this, there are guys who will buy the actual C-stand holders right here or a couple of hooks that make it really hard to get through doors. And you can right. drop them right here. And we're just dropping them right here, right above these, these center pieces that hold it for stability. You can just drop them right across. And that's what we've been doing on all of our productions. And it's been great. Um, I don't know if you have any photos from NAB we do, and we'll throw them up. Um, but they had their entire, like they had C-stands, um, which have the junior pin at the bottom, and they were just right. putting full on C-stands. It just, that's what really sold us, um, was going to their booth and seeing um, what they were doing with these corners. And we were just like, dude, we can put our camera on there. We could put lights on there. Cause they were literally, they, they, like right now, Salins is the catch all manufacturer at this point. Um, they were lighting, as Josh already talked about, photography stuff photography, lighting, modifiers. Camera they got like, cages, batteries, lights. Yeah, now they have full-on camera cages, batteries. They may have lights, like 600 watt lights, 1200 watt lights, like full everything. And so as they're making like, you know, the grip equipment, they're literally putting the grip equipment in here, putting their lights on it, putting their modifiers on it. That's where I got the idea. Oh yeah, and, and they've got their own stands they make, like C stands, combo stands, light stands that are designed to fit a little hook they make that just just a hook that just clips like a robocup clips you know just the hook clips on the side of the car and the stand just sits in the hook so if you buy their whole ecosystem boy it's slick it um, is it is and and, it, and it, what's crazy is they're doing this stuff at a very affordable price so you compare it to super affordable I, I mean i mean their c stands are cheaper than flashpoint c stands um which is saying something uh quality wise are they going to hold up i don't know we didn't get one <laughs> yeah i mean but it's it's all it's all steel so it's you know it's it's hard to break. Uh, there are there are cons to getting the more expensive ones. Like we've talked about getting some Matthew stands. They're all flush to one side. The knobs are all on one side. It just makes life easier. Right. There, but, there's uh, little little things, reasons why the big brands are the big brands. Yep. Yep. And why they cost a premium. But anyway, if 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 you're going if if you're at one of the trade shows and you see Salins and you decide to get a cart, uh, buy the accessories right there, <laughs> right there and then. Because shipping from China is not cheap. Yeah. Yeah. And that's kind of what makes these things still so cheap, which I'm all about America made and I'm all about our economy getting boosted and doing well. But uh, when you're in the budget market, you're in the budget market. What can we say? And the budget market doesn't come from America. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So we've talked about pros. Let's talk about cons. Um, one of the cons is this being a budget product. There are corners that have been cut, right? Um, that said, it doesn't feel like a budget product overall. It feels very good um, and we like using it. But when you go to do certain things, um, like you notice the finish is not the best, right? Uh, it scratches easy. Or when you go to slide the uh, wheels on that dovetail, it just, it's kind of sticky, right? Yeah. It doesn't just slide on little things, right? Or, or, or maybe like when you go to do these corner latches, it's like, oh, there's some slop in it. Um, it's not perfectly tight. Um, things like that. Right, and you're like, is this gonna loosen up over time? I'm not sure. Uh, so far, it's been fine. Uh, we, actually, we do have one that got kind of loose and it's like, okay, I'm not sure if there's a way to tighten this thing, um, but it's, it's little things, right? Nothing that, that means you can't use the cart, nothing that means, oh, it's broken. Uh, so far for us, um, we can't talk about cons without mentioning what happened to Justin Porter. He uh, also had a Salem's cart. He had the thing loaded down. He was on a chute and a wheel snapped off. So then he's trying to tow the cart back 
and a handle snaps off. And so he just, he had to make a video and he's just like, guys, I'm sorry, I screwed up. I tried to save money and this is what happened. We do know this is, like we said, kind of a pre-production model. Um, when we were at NAB and we picked this up off the show floor, um, the mouse pad wasn't in there, right? And they had to send that to us. They're all, oh, sorry, you, know, you guys didn't get the mouse pad. We're gonna send that to you. Um, and, and we've noticed things that we can tell are like, okay, this is you know, a pre-production model. Uh, so there are issues with our specific cart and probably issues with Justin's specific cart. I wanna say this is a great cart. I think it's a good value for the money. I think if you buy one, you'll probably be happy. However, I can't guarantee your car and my car are gonna have the same quality control. Yeah. Uh, and we know that they're already re-engineering things, which is probably gonna raise the price a little bit, you know, which, I mean, if you're doing a better job, that makes sense, right? Um, it is a very affordable cart. It is based on the innovative design. Um, as we looked at innovative and looked at this and talked to the designer, we're like, yeah, this is literally based on the innovative design. Yeah. And so it's based on a good design. The quality of manufacturing, uh, as far as we can tell, is good enough. Um, it's definitely not perfect. There's, there's little things. Uh, and when you compare this to an innovative, there are little things. Uh, but those little things add up and sometimes those little things become big things. So uh, definitely some things to be aware of um, as you're looking at this cart. Uh, but overall, it's good. It has not failed us, and that's what's really important at the end of the day. Um, does this cart fail us on a production? Because if a wheel snaps off or something, that's something that we definitely uh, want to be aware of. And if it does happen, we will let you know. Yeah. Because we're not we're not about to pretend like everything's fine. If something goes wrong like that, we paid money for this cart. Uh, this we did not get this for free. Yeah. <laughs> In exchange of, for a review. One of the big things that that when that happened to Justin Porter that I thought of was like that's completely unacceptable. Um, because when you're out on a production, you're 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 getting paid if if you know what you're worth you're getting paid good money to be there and you, this is part of that you factor this is part right. of my production and if it breaks like that that's a big deal so because it's a poor reflection on you and yes. your production company and it's it's a failure in front of your client it's, it's it's like if you bought a lens and the lens just stopped working you're like uh okay like your client is not thinking oh bad on salens they're thinking bad on you like Right. What's wrong with your equipment? Right. What's wrong with you? Because the client goes, what kind of cheap garbage did you buy that just broke on you like that? Yeah. And they go, that means you're not quality. And so it is a big, it is a big deal. It's a, it's a reflection on you. And that's why we have to be careful in the choices we make as production companies uh, and the things that we buy. And we don't buy really cheap things in places where it matters. Um, yeah. Like I have no problem buying third party batteries all day long because they're a third or quarter of the price of the other batteries. And the only bad thing that happens is they die a little faster. And guess what? They're cheap. I can buy three of them for the same price. So I'm still getting more battery life for the dollar. And I just know it's going to die sooner and I'll just be careful. And I have extras right there. It's not a big deal when a battery dies. Yeah. Uh, so there are things like that where it's okay to cut the corners. One more thing I do want to mention back to the Justin Porter situation is Salen's response. They responded quickly. They said they were going to fix things. Uh, and both we and Justin have been giving them feedback on the cart, using it on production. They've been accepting that feedback. They've been asking for feedback. And when that situation with Justin happened, they did come out pretty quickly and say, you know, hey, we're sorry. And, and they also came out reasonably quickly and said, hey, here's what we're doing to fix this for future carts. And they put out a post that, you know, thanking us and, and Justin for the feedback. Hey, here's the list of things we're gonna do to fix this. Based on the things they've told us, it's gonna be a way better cart and it's gonna be sturdier. And they're addressing the issues in manufacturing and the issues in the design that led to the failure that Justin had and that are leading to some of the issues that we're experiencing. As we were at the show and we purchased the cart, we kind of knew that we were taking the risk of being beta testers. They didn't say any of that. As I said before, they just kind of came to market with it. and. Yeah. And so I think that's that's the big caveat that, you know, in my review on my channel and with this review, we're, we're, we're letting people know we kind of, we knew what we were getting into in the sense of kind of being beta testers um, for us anyway, knowing that this was just so, so fresh to market, knowing that they do not have a presence in the cart market. But I think the thing that needs to be said for us here at Story King is it's been great. You know, it's been really good. I would personally, I would say it's about like a like a 90 percent good over bad. 10% uh, has been 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 rough, but we've been able to work around it, you know. Uh, <laughs> there have been times when we've made ourselves look look pretty foolish. Hey, you need any help with that? That's all good. I got three guys. Bam, right into a shelf. <laughs> oh, Ooh. that was a good, I, I wish we had behind the scenes of that. We were rolling out of a, out of a corporate shoot through, through their uh, main lobby, and 
We had come out of the elevator and I was pulling the cart backwards like an idiot because I didn't flip around so I could see where I was going. And as we're rolling out the door, we got three of us rolling out with gear and the, the girl at the front desk is like, hey, do you guys need help? And I'm like, oh no, there's three of us. Bam, <laughs> right into a shelf. <laughs> One of the awards go, oh my. Oh, yeah. Oh, shoot. We had to like open up their cabinet and like fix the award and, <laughs> and the girl is just like, <laughs> You got that, guys. All right. I could not stop laughing in the parking lot. It was oh. so good. It was rich. It was really good. It was one of those just comedic moments where, <laughs> you know, God is like, you got this? Watch. <laughs> yeah, it was one of those like, Take yeah. your pride down a yeah, notch. Yeah, we got it. We got three guys. We're good. <laughs> Bam. <laughs> anyway. Uh, so, yeah, there, there, there have been uh, things. Comedic relief. So, in conclusion, final thoughts with this cart is we like it. We're very happy with it. We're happy with our purchase. We're happy that you know we did negotiate a deal on it, um, and and we're glad uh, for the price we paid. Uh, even if we had paid retail, we would be happy uh, yeah. for the for this cart because it does the job. It ticks the boxes. It looks professional. It performs well. Um, and, and yes, there are a few cons with it. Um, you know, there are a few build quality issues. There are a few things where maybe it's not as sturdy as we would like, or this or that. But at the end of the day, it does the job. At the end of the day, clients are impressed and it's held up for us. And we've put it through its paces in the last dozen shoots over the last you know, two, three months we've had this thing. Uh, we've not been gentle, Mike knows, I'm not gentle with gear, uh, just in general. So I have not treated this cart any different. Um, with the, the exception that we are aware of some kind of weakness in the wheel design. And so as we go over you know, big bumps or as we make a tight turn, we, we are a little ginger uh, on, the, on the, uh, the turning wheels in particular. Yes. Because uh, we've noticed they're not as strong as we would like. Uh, but overall, the cart's been fantastic. We're really glad we bought it. And I feel like I can recommend it overall with the caveats you know, that you've seen in this video. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, subscribe and comment and all that good stuff. And we look forward to seeing you in the next video.